you are going to have very very high superheat and just remember when uh, the pressure temperature relationship that happens so when uh, pressure temperature goes up pressures go up and vice versa we're not going to get into that in this in this um, example but I just want you to realize what happens within the system to the refrigerant itself as we go through an undercharge system so let's take a look at an overcharge system all right so we will start again at the compressor and we have our high pressure high temperature vapor refrigerant leaving the compressor it may have superheat it may not have superheat but it will begin to de uh, su it will desuperheat if there is any and we'll look at that on the flip side so it, it, as it enters the condensing unit it's going to change state from vapor to liquid it's going to get rid of all of that heat vapor to liquid get rid of all of that heat and what happens is it goes through this uh, condenser just like it should but instead of beginning to back up here it backs up earlier on in the condensing unit so this is now all liquid where it should be changing state and it backs up this refrigerant so it spends a longer time in the condenser and it takes longer to find its way up here to the metering device and what happens is the it picks up more subcooling because this refrigerant is 125 degrees Fahrenheit and if it's overcharged enough I mean you could drop you could you could drop the uh, temperature and add so much superheat that it's almost outdoor air temperature because it's been sitting out here in this condenser with this um, condenser fan blowing that 95 degree air over it for a longer period of time than it should and instead of being 105 degrees up here it might be 95 degrees or 90 de well it couldn't get below 95 but it could be 95 degrees and and if you do your um i'm sorry yeah so th that's right so it's 95 degrees and then if you measure your subcooling which is the saturation temperature as measured by your gauge from the physical temperature if we have 125 and 95 now we have 30 degrees of subcooling so we pick up tons and tons of subcooling because of the backed up refrigerant in the condenser okay so that makes sense so we have the refrigerant the refrigerant is now uh, backed up for a longer period of time in this condenser and it, it and it sheds more heat so your subcooling increases when the system is overcharged so we still have that solid column of liquid we still hit the metering device 75 25 flash gas and then we move our way through the evaporator coil changing state changing state changing state changing state continues to change state but because there's too much refrigerant in the system instead of being a 100 percent vapor at this point it's still changing state there's still liquid in the system and it works its way down here it's changing state State, changing state changing state it's still liquid and vapor because it's overcharged and we bring liquid back to the compressor and it might only be um, 90 percent it might only be 10 percent liquid and 90 percent vapor but we still have liquid nonetheless and because we're still changing state as it exits the evaporator coil instead of measuring 50 degrees Fahrenheit here, it's going to be 40 degrees, because remember we looked at the uh, 69 PSIG and that equ is equivalent to 40 degrees Fahrenheit because that's what's happening right here where it should be changing state and, and picking up lots of heat. And it's still changing state as it comes out here. So the temperature at this point and at this point are the same. So you have, with an overcharged system, you have low to no subcooling and you have very high superheat in a fixed metering device system. All right, I hope that I, I didn't lose you on that because I can't see your faces to see if you have that uh, confused look on your face like I'm 
talking talking in a different language and way too fast. But let's take a look and um, see if you have any questions. Let's just move on here. And we can always go back if there are questions. Let me take a look and see what you got. Okay, any questions about the um, refrigeration cycles, the um, effects that it has on the fixed metering device with an overcharge and undercharge? And of, there, this video will be available to watch as well. And and I uh, thank goodness that uh, all of the systems worked, at least on my end. Well, we, I'll review the video and find that out on your end. All right, last time for question, guys. All right, so you can email me, reach me through Google+, Plus, find, uh, call me on the phone. If I can do anything for you and help you, please let me know. And um, Andy, if you're still with me, I will um, be more than happy to answer your question for you. Okay, Andy, I, I, if you're still with me, go ahead and type in there your, your question and I'll uh, see if we can figure out your soda machine. I don't, I don't, what kind of metering device does it have? Or what, what kind of metering devices do they have? All right. Well, I guess we lost Andy on that one. All right, gents. Thank you very much. Um, in the next couple of weeks, keep your eye open. We're going to do, be doing TXVs and how they operate. Then we'll take a look at um, how the refrigeration cycle and overcharge and undercharge affects the TXV system.